it's Miss Kathy. I hope you're joining me for today's Art Attack. Today we're going to be making wizard wands out of chopsticks. So, this is one of our special crafts where you'll need to stop at the library and pick up one of our packets. Within the packet, you'll get chopsticks, some paint, as well as a glue gun. This craft is designed for folks over the age of 11 through 18, and it will include the use of a hot glue gun. So if you've not used a hot glue gun before, we'll, we will talk about some safety protocols. If you have a hot glue gun at home already and would like to do this craft, if you let us know, we'll give you the other supplies for the craft, but not the hot glue gun so that more people can participate. If you do borrow one of our hot glue guns, we're asking people to please return them to us so that we can use them again for another craft. Okay, let's gather our supplies and get ready to go. Inside your craft pack, you're going to find chopsticks. We got our chopsticks at Walmart. Uh, you can get chopsticks online, or if your family eats Asian food, uh, you might have some chopsticks laying around. We use chopsticks. They're about the right length for the item. Because they're wood, they'll take the hot glue and the paint quite well. And we've found that you can decorate them in a variety of fashions. Now, as I mentioned, we're using hot glue guns to create the wavy effect on the hot, on the chopstick. So, if you've not used a hot glue gun before, there are a couple of safety tips that I'd like to give you. First of all, yes, a hot glue gun is hot. It melts the plastic glue stick, and if you get it on your skin, the glue can uh, burn and will stink. I've gotten it on myself a number of times. Usually what I do is I put the hot glue gun down on a safe surface and then run my hand under cold water. I recommend that you put a piece of newspaper or cardboard on whatever table that you're using for your craft to protect the surface of your table from glue dripping on it or for uh, the paint once we get to it. Okay. The other thing that you need to keep in mind with the hot glue is that you need to be patient and go slow. The glue melts at a certain rate, and if you aren't patient with it, it will glob out in a way that you may not like on your stick. Also, um, it will drip when, because it's hot, and if you go too fast and apply too much, then it will sort of run off. So, uh, and I will demonstrate some of those kinds of things to you. So you'll want to plug in your hot glue gun. And it usually takes a couple of minutes to heat all the way up. Once it does get warm, the tip from here on will be quite warm. You'll notice that there's a trigger and you'll need to put your hot glue in the bath and pull the trigger to force out the melted glue. Okay, let me show you a couple of techniques up close. As I mentioned, we'll be giving you some chopsticks. And to show you some of the techniques, I'm going to use this flat sort of uh, construction instruction stick just to show you some of the techniques. Okay, so one of the things with the hot balloon gun is that you want to pull the trigger and if you want to create sort of a wavy effect, you can gently pull it back and forth and that'll give you sort of the vine or the uh, texture treatment for your stick. 
if you want to do some sort of globs, you can do that by uh, sort of piling it on. And you can kind of use the nozzle uh, because the glue is liquid. You'll see that it's sort of dripping down. So you're going to want to make sure that as you're doing this, you don't accidentally drip it on your finger. Okay. On this chopstick, you'll see that I have done a little bit of both. I've created a ring here as well as dripping and smoothing it down along the side. You'll see that I've created a certain amount of height on the chopstick. And then I've also used it to create the handle. For the handle, I find that I need to apply several coats of the hot glue. If you apply the glue all at once, then it'll drip off. So I highly recommend that you put a layer on, let the glue sit and cool and dry the whole way before applying the next sort of coat. Otherwise, when you go, it'll actually melt the glue that's underneath with the heat from the freshly applied and it'll create issues with dripping and whatnot. So you can see there that I've applied a little bit of the glue and it's shiny compared to the glue that's already been on. It's going to drip down the side. So I'm gonna take the nozzle and sort of smooth it out. If you get some of these sort of glue strings, uh, you can gently pull them off carefully, or you can wait until your glue has completely dried. And then sometimes if you use a hot blow dryer, it will uh, melt the glue and blow off the little strands. Another technique that I've used with the hot glue gun is where I've taken the glue and sort of globbed it on, and then I use the tip to sort of smear it, if you will, to coat the whole stick. That way you get rid of some of the corners of the chopstick and make it more cylindrical. I like the chopstick because it does have a natural taper to it so that you can make it look a little more organic or more like a tree branch, okay? Some of the chopsticks that I've made in the past and turned into wands, you can see that this one, where I've created a big sort of uh, glob of the glue, and then I've created a smaller one and then a small handle. Uh, this chopstick, I did a spiral very carefully the whole way around, and I've painted it to give you a sense of how that might look. We also have some fancy ones with some creative coloring as well. However, in the craft pack, we're going to give you some black, some brown, and then some sort of a uh, shade that will be sort of an enhanced color. And so what I recommend is that you put your paint on a palette, uh, perhaps a paper plate or plastic plate. Uh, you'll get a paintbrush. And what you can do is take the paint and you can choose to paint your wand completely black or completely brown. If you want to sort of mix the paint just a little so that you've got a little bit of each. Then when you paint it on, you'll see some of uh, the 
brown and some of the black mixed together, once again, giving it sort of an uh, weathered or worn effect. And so you can choose to do that. You can paint it a base color, like just the brown or just the black, and then add some highlights of the other color if you'd like. I recommend that you use a couple of coats. I find that some of the nooks and crannies of the hot glue are trickier to get covered with paint. And sometimes the paint doesn't like to stick to the hot glue as well as you'd like. So for example, you can kind of see here where the uh, paint is sort of a translucent, whereas on the stick, it's a little more opaque. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend that you put several coats. Make sure that you coat the end of your chopstick as well. Otherwise, it looks sort of strange to just have this dark one and then suddenly a lighter tip. I find that to let your stick dry, I usually put it upright in a plastic cup. Uh, that way, any paint that drips down will drip the whole way down and it'll protect whatever surface. I've mentioned that we've given you sort of an accent color. On this chopstick that I painted mostly uh, brown, I've added a little bit of this pearl or silver paint. And I find that if I use a dry brush and then just sort of streak it on, uh, that gives it, uh, once again, one of those sort of worn accent uh, metallic shades. And so that you can sort of get a little bit of a metallic shimmer to it. This is a magic wand after all. And so you would want it to uh, have a little bit of sparkle. Uh, I have used glitter paint in the past that I've had at my house. Uh, for example, with this wand, I actually had uh, green glitter. And when the paint was still damp, I loosely sprinkled the glitter on. Uh, we've not given you the glitter uh, since we don't know if you would like that effect or not. But if you have glitter at home and you feel crafty, you can always do that as well. So once you get all of that done and whatnot, your wand is ready to go. And you can choose to hang it anywhere you'd like. Uh, put it in your room or put it in your bag. You never know when you might need a magic wand to dispel the darkness, or defend yourself, or cast an enchantment as you're reading some book about dragons and wizards and how they manage to escape their dragon's lairs. All right, friends, thank you for joining me for this craft. Well, again, all of these supplies are generally available at craft stores or paint stores. The trickiest part is getting the glue stick, I'm sorry, the chopstick, and I've already mentioned where you can get this. So join us again, friends, for another craft, and we'll see you next time. Bye!